Welcome to Top Advisor Marketing, where you will learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your practice. Brought to you by Top Advisor Podcasting, a done-for-you podcasting solution built just for trusted advisors. And now, your co-hosts of Top Advisor Marketing, Kirk Lowe and Matt Halloran. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. We have a return guest, which we always love because we usually ask people to uh, come back when they're providing our listeners with some gold. And it's Luke Acree. Now, he is uh, one of the founding partners and uh, one of the great people at Reminder Media. We absolutely love everything that they're doing. They do what we don't do. uh, We do what they don't do. And so we all play in the sandbox together very, very well. But we're going to talk about the 2019 marketing trends. One of the reasons why Luke is so good at at being professional about what's going on is because they do more than just financial services, which means that they're plugged into a lot of other veins of marketing success, which means that they can also take those and use them in our industry and financial services. So Luke, welcome to the show, man. Man, thanks for having me. It's great to be back. I keep getting invited back, so I, I, it's making me feel kind of good about myself. Well, <laughs> it, make, it makes us feel good too, that we've got a partner like you guys, because I, I really, I, I've told the story when you're not on the podcast about some of the stuff that you had done and that we're going to talk about today, which are the touches that you even did with us as just a strategic partner. And, and you know, that just, it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, but we're going to start off by talking about uh, the 2019 marketing trend. So what are you seeing? What are you going to do about what you're seeing? And uh, how does reminder media provide a solution for that? No, yeah, I love it. So it's a great question. And obviously, you know, you got to take everything I say with a grain of salt. But let me give you guys kind of my perspective on what I think is happening. If you you look at 2019, what's the biggest question on most people's minds is what's going to happen with the economy, right? So we have all this turmoil that's happening that, you know, I'm not going to give my opinion on that either way. But, you know, what's going to happen with the economy? Are we heading back into a recession? And then more importantly, what does that mean for you as a business? And what I'm seeing in the market, and to give you guys a little bit of background kind of, is that we not only work with financial advisors, but we work with over 30,000 real estate agents, which ties us in very closely from a data perspective and from a trends perspective into the real estate market. So we can kind of see what's happening in the real estate market. And there's a couple things that I see from a marketing perspective and from a business perspective that you as an advisor it should be focusing on. And if anybody who's not an advisor listening to this, it applies to your business as well. It's something I call relationship marketing. And the reason why I say that is because there's a couple of revolutions that have happened over time in history and in our world. You know, you have stuff like the Industrial Revolution. What has happened today, right? You call it the technology revolution, but what really I call it is the data revolution. What has happened is that technology has advanced to such a point that now data is being collected on everything we do. So if you have social media accounts, if you're doing stuff, they're collecting that data and they're using that data as a way to serve up relevant content to you, relevant things that matter to you. And what that has turned the consumer into expecting is they no longer expect great customer service. Customer service is a given. And and the way you guys should think about customer service is customer service is really reactive, where it's something where someone calls you and needs something and you fulfill that need and you do it well, you do it quickly and all that good stuff. But it's more reactive than reaching out to you. It's not proactive. What people have come to expect is not just customer service, man. They've come to expect a customer experience. And that's driven by, I expect now when I log into a portal, I expect it to be personalized to me. I expect my experience, like even like subconsciously as I go throughout my day, I start now expecting things to be quicker for me, more convenient, more personalized. And that's where I see the trends happening, not only in the real estate market, but I see it in the financial advisor market because there's apps now that I can invest my money very, very quickly. I can get the service that you're giving to me. I can get the technical aspect of that. So what really, really matters is the experience that I have. The experience and not only the experience, but making it more personal to me of my likes, my interests, who I am as a person. And I believe that as a business in 2019, this is where I'm moving my business to and where I would encourage all of you guys to is 
hey, if the market and this I should knock on wood doing this because, you know, I'm not saying that the market's going to curve. But if the market obviously goes into a recession, if you have not built a relationship with each of your clients, an experience for your clients, and all you've done is provide a good service, you will lose those clients. Your chances of losing those clients is so much higher than the people who have built a relationship. And I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by that. If I, if you're my financial advisor and all you've done is help me with my investment strategies and you sent me my annual reports and you, you've met with me quarterly and all that good stuff, that is awesome. You should be doing that. But when the market takes a turn, I'm going to look at that service and go, man, did they advise me wrong? Was their service not good enough? But if you're the guy that's not only done that or girl that's not only done that, but it's taken me fly fishing, that's taken me out for beers, that we've gone to sports games with, that there's a personal connection. When the market curves, it's a lot harder for me to move my account because there's a personal tie there. And that is where every business should be focusing because technology should not be a replacement to you as an advisor or a real estate agent or an insurance agent. It should be something that obviously you use as an enhancement to your business. It enables you to do even better service. And so kind of to summarize what I guess I'm saying here is that I see a huge shift in consumers expecting immediate gratification. And not only immediate gratification, I see them expecting personalized service. But I see businesses like advisor businesses still not doing personalized relationship driven businesses where they focus more on doing all these touch points about their business, all these touch points about that person's transaction, not that person's life. And I would tell you, start shifting your focus to really make sure you not only know your client's financials, you know their kids, you know they, what their hobbies are, you know what they're doing in their careers. You're reaching out to them, touching base with them and saying, Happy holidays. How was your holidays? How's your New Year's? What's your plan? Whatever it is, build a relationship with them because no matter what happens with technology and no matter what happens with the market, those things are going to come and go and change. But a relationship is going to stand the test of time. It's going to last. So hopefully that's making sense to you. But that's really where I see the market headed in 2019. Absolutely. I just have a couple of quick follow up questions for you. Num number one, um, where in the heck do I put all of that information that you just outlined about my clients to make it so that I can do things that are immediate and personal? Luke, that's the biggest issue is there are there are financial advisors and insurance agents all over the country who have great CRMs that have information I'm um, talking about their kids and their hobbies and all this stuff. I mean, those are those are fields now in most CRMs, yep. but the advisors don't do crap with that information. And even if they could do anything with information, they don't know how to make it proactive, immediate and personal help with that, please. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I think that's a great question. So I think the the biggest mistake and pain point that you're touching on, which I think is very relevant, is that. Where people lack is they do not take action. They do the, the basic stuff, which is they have, they have a CRM. Everybody's made the jump to having a CRM. But they're not taking action and in, in using that information to drive relevant conversations. Very, very simplistically and quickly, you can very easily start to understand what you should send and, and when you should send by life events. That would be the first practical example I could give you is that you should look at your CRM. You have the dates of, you should, if you don't, in those fields, you should have the dates of their life events, i.e. the anniversary of when they actually became a client with you, i.e. their birthday, i.e. their marriage anniversary, those things, significant things like uh, kids graduations. Then think about it this way. You need to obviously implement follow-up strategies and nurture campaigns in your business that can in a way be on autopilot, but they have to be personal. So an idea would be imagine at New Year's, you pulled out your phone and sent a personal text to everybody in your database, thanking them for a great year and wishing them great success in 2019. Here's the beautiful thing about that. Statistically, 98% of all text messages are read. 
Compare that to emails. People are not reading their emails anymore. So those new newsletter emails that you're sending out, they're not bad. You guys should continue to do that. Every You need multiple touch points to build that mind share. But the statistics of them actually opening that and reading the information and stuff has really lowered. So a personalized text, you send it to it's 98% open rate. But even better than that, it feels more personal. Even though you might send the same scripted text message to every one of your clients for this New Year's event that's happened and triggered, it's a quick 20-minute exercise. You pull out your phone. You literally text, hey, thinking about you. hope you have a great you know, 2019. Just wanted to thank you for being such a great client. That, when I get a text message from my, I'll use Keith Wilson as an example because he's my insurance agent. He texts me stuff like that all the time. I know in my mind what he's doing, but it still makes me feel good. It's super simple. It's geared around a life event. So do your touch points around life events. So here's another tangible example for you. Are you sending some type of birthday card or some type of gift to your clients on their birthday? Are you going on their Facebook page and wishing them happy birthday, their LinkedIn and wishing them happy birthday? And the reason why I know this is so critical and important is because every time LinkedIn gives me the message to tell me that it's someone's birthday, I, don't, I wasn't really doing it. I wasn't going there to LinkedIn and doing the birthday. When my birthday came around and people started wishing me happy birthday on LinkedIn, it still made me feel good. And so you got to, in marketing, you got to put yourself in the consumer's shoes or in your client's shoes. And so those are two tangible, really quick things that you can add to your touch point list where you're doing a birthday card, where you're doing a text message at a I call it a life event, but an event that makes sense. It's, it's, it's something that it's easy to write a text message around. And then more importantly than that, what you want to do is you want to come up with a strategy. And this is obviously what we do at Reminder Media. So, you know, no brainer. I would love to help you guys do this. But come up with a strategy where you're sending your clients things that they will perceive as value and as a gift that aren't totally transactional based. What do I mean by transactional based? Well, I'm going to put you guys in the consumer shoes and the client shoes. When your real estate agent sends you an update on the market, what do you do with that? When they send you that postcard of a just listed, just solds in your neighborhood, what do you do with that? And how does that make you feel? And the truth is what you're probably thinking is what 100 percent of the people I talk to tell me is that they go, oh, yeah, I glance at it and I look at it and I toss it. And it's not that it hasn't served a purpose. It's stayed on the home. Statistically, postcards live for five to eight seconds, that type of idea. It gives that mind share, but you're tossing it. So, you know, look at your marketing strategy. When you're sending people things, what are you sending to them that they will actually hang on to? And the key to giving someone something they'll hang on to is called relevancy. What that means is it has to be relevant to them, relevant to their likes and interests. Basically, that's what will give you the value. And so where like our company comes in, to give you an example, is we create a 48-page coffee table customizable magazine that has nothing to do with financial services and has everything to do with just entertainment like travel, art, food, technology, a little bit of everything for everybody. But the reason why we've been in business for 15 years Purely is around the simple concept that when people pull it out of their mailbox, there's like this light bulb, this psychological impact, for lack of a better word, that happens to them where they literally go, man, this is really nice. And they don't throw it away. And it ends up living on their coffee table, living on their countertop, their bedside table. But even if you don't, you don't have to use a magazine to do something like this. What's key here is you have to know your clients. Because if you know your clients and you know what they'll enjoy, that's going to get you the relevancy, which will ultimately get you the shelf life. And so when you look at your basically your marketing to you know get back and summarize this question is use life events to send touch points. But more importantly, use the relevant data to drive the touch point that you send. Use the segmentation of your list in your CRM to drive the touch point you send. What segmentation? Well, that's your clients you have now that have maybe been with you for five years. Then you have a set that are new clients that have been with you for you know maybe a year or less. Then you have your prospects. Like you can segment your client list to drive your relevant messaging and your relevant marketing. 
How does one? I'm sorry, I, was, I was going off there. So oh, I that, that's there that's all right, brother. <laughs> I love your passion. It's fantastic. Uh, you know, a lot of times I'm the most excited person on the podcast, but you're uh, you're doing great today. So hey, how do you scale this, man? So you just said something, and I've I personally done this. Um, I like I have my uh, oh, my my financial services professionals that I'm friends with who have been clients who I'd love to continue to do business with. And I do text them on new happy new year, Merry Christmas, happy Thanksgiving. But how does one scale that? I mean, that, that to me, I mean, can that be auto program? Do you have to touch the, your phone? How, how do you execute that? Because I'm hearing financial advisors saying, Oh, Luke, that's a great idea. How the heck do I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a great question. So obviously there's, it, it, I call it operational leverage. Um, so this was something that a real estate broker owner taught me this term. He's out in Seattle, Washington, but I think it applies to every business. Operational leverage is passing off the things. Basically, you as a business owner should be doing what only you can do. As the president of Reminder Media, Luke is the only one that can do certain things as the president of Reminder Media. So I have to do those things. The other things that I should be doing are the things that I love, right, and the things that I'm gifted in. Um, That's where my focus should be. So everything else should be leveraged off, and and I should have operational leverage in my business. So for you guys, when you go, how do I do this? Well, you can do this yourself. Obviously, you can pull out your phone and, and spend 30 minutes to do that. And send a text message or you can find a company that does mass text messages. There's tons out there. Just go to Google and they do mass text messages for you. It will cost you probably like $24.99 a month or something like that. And you can all of a sudden upload your list of contacts from your phone, type that one message, hit send in a 20 minute task that would have taken you. Now it takes you two minutes in the morning when you wake up. There's companies like my company, Reminder Media, that helps you develop not only this magazine to hit your clients, but we have different magazines that you can use depending on your client base. So we'll do maybe 20 minutes to 45 minutes upfront learning about your business. And then it's on autopilot, but it's personalized. The, the letters in the magazines are personalized down to your individual client. You, we can choose the magazine that you would want to send depending on your client base. We then you know, look at your client base and go, does your client base want a digital magazine or do they want a print magazine? And then track the analytics. So operational leverage is key. And what you got to ask yourself is where is your time best sent? This is an obvious thing that I'm saying, but... What happens to people is they don't take action. They're going to hear this idea in their car in the morning when they're listening to this podcast, but they don't take action and literally start leveraging off the pieces in their business. And one thing that I've learned over my years of growing a business and and networking with other people who grow businesses, entrepreneurs, the successful ones, man, they just act. They just go and act and they just start moving forward. And so what I would encourage you guys to do, first step is, do you have a CRM to store your data? Second step is, who are your partners in your operational leverage? Is it going to be Reminder Media? Is it going to be, there's plenty of companies out there that you can set up these campaigns that understand this concept of personal marketing, relationship marketing, and leverage it out to them. There's the proactive aspect of this instead of the reactive aspect. And I want to highlight that from everything that Luke is saying. One of the neat things about what Reminder Media does for you is it puts a lot of this stuff on autopilot and you will get comments because we've actually experienced this and and, and not just talking with Luke, but some other people who've used uh, Reminder, they'll say, Oh my God, one of my clients just called me and said, thanks for this amazing magazine about, you know, something that they're about in this situation, it was food. Wow. You know, I got some great recipes, you know, all of this stuff. And and it made them feel really good. Those proactive, customized, personalized, all of these words that Luke is using over and over again are something that has been sorely missing in financial services because nobody's been able to figure out how to put it on autopilot. Um, and everybody's too, everybody's a little bit, I shouldn't say too, but we're too analytical. Like we, oh, sure. we're, we're not emotional enough. I hate this. I, I guess that's too stereotypical. So I, I shouldn't say. Oh that, no, you're spot on brother. No, I'm going to give you that one. Yeah. My, my experience has been, we're too analytical. We're not, um, but we're emotional beings and you got to understand what our clients are really leaning on us for, especially in today's age with the shift in technology and where everything's going is we have to be the Sherpa. 
We have to be the person. I can climb Mount Everest on my own. I can get a GPS on my own. I can I can get the gear on my own to climb that Mount Everest. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hire a Sherpa because I want that emotional support, let alone the experience, but I want the emotional support as I'm going up that mountain. As an advisor, you're really that guide. You're that Sherpa. You're someone who's been there before that can be that emotional support. So often we focus purely on the technical. And this is why you keep 2% of the inherited wealth. That when the, the God forbid, the you know death in the family happens and the transfer of wealth to the kids, the advisor that had the parents' money, 2% of the time will keep the account uh, statistically. And it's not because of anything other than we did not connect with everybody from a personal level or relationship level because we should have reached out and been in touch with the kids and we should have built a relationship with them. And it would have been nothing about a transaction, nothing about the analytics or anything like that. It would have been purely about just, hey, want to you know, want to reach out to you, introduce myself and start building a relationship with them. But those are why those statistics happen. Yeah. Amen to that, brother. I, I can't, uh, you know, and then you have the, uh, you know, 90 percent of women are solely responsible for their finances at some point in their life and 70 percent of them leave their husband's financial advisor. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. Uh, you know, if you're if all you do when you're sitting down a meeting with the client is talking about golf and the, the wife doesn't play golf and in fact hates that her husband plays golf, she's going to leave you. She's out. <laughs> so, all right. In the time that we have left, Luke, what what's a, what is a good, if you were to prioritize everything that you had said today, or at least one or two yep. steps, what would those be? And then what are you guys doing uh, this first part of the year uh, that our listeners can take advantage of? Yeah. So here's what I would tell you guys, as you think about your 2019 is I would challenge each and every one of you to go through a relationship audit is what I would call it. And that means pull up your, your database, whether you have it in a CRM or you don't and go down and ask yourself the question about each of these contacts, how engaged are you with them? Not what their, what the service has been, but how engaged in a relationship are you with them? And from there, that should really help you prioritize your list of who you really need to work hard to build a relationship with, which I think can give you actionable items. But then from there, you need to ask yourself, we're into 2019. We're already almost to the end of you know this the first month of 2019. And what is your touch points for those people on that list? Meaning, how are you going to reach out to them to build the relationship. And if you don't have a plan, you know, you're really doomed that you're planning to fail. And I know that's a little corny, but the truth is you should know I'm going to reach out to each of these people that I just audited on my list to audit myself on where my relationship is with each of these people. Do I know their kids? Do I know, you know, what's going on in their life? That type of idea. And then I'm going to set at a minimum, I'm going to reach out and have six touch points to them. I will give you guys a, a data point of a top, top producer in Ameriprise that is a, is a friend and a great client. He does over 30 touch points to his clients. And this guy is uber successful and he does over 30 touch points and he spent a ton of time researching how many touch points he needed to do. And he tried a bunch of different things. We found in the real estate game, and you'll see this verified by Gary Keller's um, millionaire real estate agent study, they found 33 touch points with real estate agents to their clients. So there's correlations in how many touch points someone needs. But at a minimum, you should be having six touch points to these clients. So you need to say, what are those going to be? So guys, obviously our company, Reminder Media, does six magazines a year that you could use for that. But you could use our magazine as one of the touch points and send out every quarter a, a magazine to people or every two months a magazine to people. Then you could have a text mu- text message um, literally on maybe 4th of July. You could do a birthday card on their birthday. And all of a sudden, you got yourself up to 12, 18 touch points really, really easily. For anybody who hears this podcast and wants to try out Reminder Media, 
and wants to try out the power of what this thing can do for you, instead of you know locking you guys into a you know, subscription right away, I would rather prove it to you guys to let it uh, show you the impact that relationship marketing can have. So we'll give you a trial right away to where you don't have to sign up for a commitment. And I'd be more than happy to throw in 15 free magazines. So I'll go, if you guys wanna go to remindermedia.com slash top advisor marketing, then we'll give you guys a promotion to try this. And my goal really for that is, obviously I would love to earn your business, but I want to reward action takers. I I just now been experiencing, now working with over 40,000 clients last year, it's that people lack taking action. We hear good ideas. There's so much good ideas out there, but people lack taking action. So if you go to remindermedia.com slash top advisor marketing, and you want to sign up and try this to experience the power of relationship marketing, more than happy to give you guys 15 free magazines on top of what you're doing. Magnificent. Luke, man, I love having you on the show. Of course, we're going to have you back. That's super fantastic. Uh, So thanks for your time today, man. Yeah, thank you. And guys, the market's changing. So focus on your clients. (laughs) Absolutely. And uh, just just to add, so 30 30 touch points is, is super ideal. Um, you know, one of the other things that you can also consider that are that are wonderful touch points um, besides the, the physical mail, which I'm a huge fan of because the pendulum swings. Uh, in fact, Luke and I talked about that on a previous podcast, how this how his magazines are quite in vogue again. The text messages, which are brilliant, which you need to be selective on what you do so that you're not just texting the living heck out of everybody because that'll get annoying. But remember Being omnipresent, another really great way to get your client's attention without being annoying is podcasting, especially when you get your clients to subscribe to that podcast. It'll show up directly on their listening device. It's like a little gift, right? It's something that's pertinent to them and delivered that they can consume just like the magazines at their convenience, which is one of the reasons why we love what everybody does at Reminder Media because it partners very well with what we do at Top Advisor Marketing. If you have not subscribed to this podcast yet, make sure that you click that subscribe now button below. That way, every time we come out with something, it'll show up directly on your listening device, just like I was talking about. And if you also wouldn't mind, take a moment to write a review and rate the podcast. That would be absolutely fantastic. And we at Top Advisor Marketing have a whole bunch of stuff coming out this year. So stay tuned for everybody at Reminder Media, Luke Acre, and everybody at Top Advisor Marketing. We'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Are you ready to change the way you communicate with your clients? Are you tired of being the best kept secret in your area? Learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your business. Contact us today and see what the power of podcasting can do for your business. Click on the Contact Us link on our website at topadvisormarketing.com and set up a call to learn more. Follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook for more updates and information. This was brought to you by iris.xyz a platform helping financial professionals become better in business and life through new media and new voices. Visit them and learn more at iris.xyz.